So we've been talking about um, the 2024 WAIEC biology practical NECO. So here, these are some of the exam, uh, some of the uh, specimen that you are likely to expect. The questions you are going to be seeing will be coming from all these specimen, and I would want to encourage you to uh, continue and make sure you get to the end of it. But at the end of it, there are some other things you are going to be doing. I have to look at some of the drawings, some of the basic drawing on how to do this, and some important things that will help you, you know, in the exam that you are going to be facing. Now let's look at the first specimen, specimen that we have here. The first specimen we have here is a uh, um, onion ball. Onion. Onion is an underground, underground organ, and with a contracted stem. That is the stem is somehow shortened. So in this underground stem, it bears the 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 leaf. This leaf is fresh and it stores what. Uh, Food as well as glucose. It has also um, auxiliary, it has auxiliary boards and terminal boards. So in in the ginger, ginger is also a, an underground stem. The underground stem they have nodes, internodes. They have a adventitious root. They have a scale leaf, and the food they have terminal board and Larry boards. The food in uh, ginger is stored as what? Is stored as what? Starch. So um, the next one we have there is a Irish potato. Irish potato is also an underground stem, an underground stem, which is uh, swollen by as a result of the food storage. And then um, food it has a scale leaf, terminal board, and uh, literal boards, and food is also stored as what? Starch. You notice that both. Uh, Irish potato and ginger, they store food in the same form. That is, they store food in form of starch. Why um, onion board store food in form of what? Glucose. Now, in the case of these two that are on the grand stem, you find out that this one is swollen. Why this other one is not really as swollen as what you have here? So this is, these are some of the things you will be looking out for. And when we come down to the D, you have the potted beans and the a e is a potted guinea corn. All these things talked about the is is all about the uh, reproduction. This is this is the two of them is a, a product of what sexual reproduction. Why these other ones? You look at this uh, g onion from onion to um, Irish potato. They are product of a uh, um, vegetative propagation. And the vegetative propagation will have two types of it, which is the what? The natural and artificial. Artificial one is not really what we are talking about here, but you should note that uh, we have an uh, uh, artificial one which has to do with cutting. Those one will be like cassava cutting sticks, where you cut it and plant another one like a uh, grafting. All of them are what? Artificial. But these are the natural form of vegetative propagation. That um, reproduction or propagation, that nagri. Um, so this is what we are. Actually, looking at now, you can see that they, all this one has to do with what vegetative propagation. Now, here is a product of what a sexual reproduction in plants. So now let's quickly look at the, the type of uh, germination we have here. The type of germination we have here is um, epigial germination. That is for the beans. So for the bean, we have epigial epigial germination, which result which is as a result of what. The cut is on being uh, lifted up a bit, a bit above, a bit above the what the soil, as a uh, because of the uh, active elongation or growth of the what epi a hypocot, after hypocotly. Because of this growth, it makes it towards grow faster, carrying out the carry lifting up the um, the cotyledon. The cotyledons will grow up with it, and this cotyledon is also what photosynthetic. They are photosynthetic, that means they can also photosynthesize. So that is, they can manufacture their own food at, at a starting level until the final leaf uh, matures. You understand? Once they come out, this one must have been dry up. They have the energy, the food, the content must have been used up. So we come to the guinea corn. The guinea corn is a, a 
is a type we call hypogyal germination, which results as uh, epicotly elongation or growing faster than the hypocotyl. So as a result of that, the first the foliage leaf are lifted up, and then the foliage leaf is the first foliage leaf is the one that does the work of what photosynthetic in nature. And and this plant also they have a they are a good example. It's common in what in um that is monocots. Why this other one is common? The germination we call FPJ is common with words diacoplidon plants. So we could be going down, going down to other ones, um, just like talking about the uh, other specimen that we're expecting. Now we we'll talk about the pigeon, pigeon head with neck. This is the specimen F. In this pigeon head, what they what they will be what you'll be expecting here is that you know we we'll talk about the adaptation it's talking about adaptation of this animal now one of the adaptation the, the, the beak is designed for what picking of grains picking of grains now the neck is short this short neck is a kind of helping it towards for easy movement that is streamlining the body system when it's flying because most of the um if the neck is is long enough it will Cause a kind of air resistance as it as it's flying on the in the air, so that's why that's one of the adaptation adaptation of the short neck that it has. Um, we talk about the uh, specimen G, which is the atlas. Atlas one of the features of the atlas is it has a large neural canal. It has flat and broad transverse section, and then it has short neural spine. Now, one of the function of this is is help the head to nod. You understand and. Um, we we'll look at the lumbar vertebra. Lumbar vertebra is the is found in the abdominal abdominal region of the body, and and it has a large flatten it has a large flatten transverse process. It has broad flat neural spine, and it has a well uh, developed pre and post vagal process. So and the function of this is was is for attachment of the what the the muscle and also via the body. Now there are some basic differences. A few of them I want to tell you the difference between these two um, atlas and uh, lumbar vertebra. One of the differences is that um, the neural canal of this place is very large, while this one is not that large. Mm -hmm. Now this other one has the centrum is absent. The centrum is absent in the atlas, while the lumbar vertebra has a very a, a prominent a well. Uh, a large or centrum, and then another one I want us to look at here is uh, the metaphysis and uh, a metaphysis and anaphysis is not present here in the atlas, but it's present in this place. There are some other um, differences. The similarities is that one of the similarities they have here is that this they have a neural spine. Neural spine uh, is a neural spine is present. A neural canal is also present. And uh, neural arc is also present. These are three, just three. I'm, I want to mention here. So um, these are some of the things you go down if you uh, go back to your books and then look at how you can get some other ones and then uh, add up to what I have said in this uh, in this uh, uh, class today. So um, the next one we'll be looking at is let's quickly look at the other ones like. Uh, specimen we are talking about specimen head in our specimen eye and the rest of them so that's what we'll be looking at so a uh, cactus plant is an example of xerophytes xerophytes are plants that uh, survive in the desert that is dry area that is where you find them now one of the feature adaptation of this uh, cactus plant which is some of the intent this is some of the interesting ones you have a, they have a, they have succulent stem. The stem is always uh, fresh because of the stored, it normally stored water there. And the leaf is a, a reduced to what? Uh, uh, spines. You understand? The leaves are reduced to spine in order to re, uh, reduce the loss of what? Water. And another thing you should know that the rooting system is well developed in the sense that it can go deep, deep, deep into the, the into the ground in order to, access water so and 
the um, the epi dinner layer is very very epi dinner layer is what very very thick. These are some of the few words that I I'll, I'll just mention. You can always go down and get more information for yourself. We have a lot of salinity. What salinity is an example of a hydrophytes. Hydrophytes are the ones that you see in the water. The plant that has ability of surviving in the water. One of the features of this plant is that the root scar because it does not need any need. It, it has no uh, problem with water. So for that reason, the root it has poorly developed what root cap because the root cap normally serves as a shield for plants that uh, stays in the that survive in the that's a meso mesophyte those ones that survive in the in the ground and in the desert area they have a they don't have any need of a root cap so this one the water lettuce does not have need for the root cap because it's what um hydrophytes so but then what happened about it is that it has many adventitious roots in order to what absorb water and then another other thing is that the stomata the stomata tends to be at the surface end for easy, easy vaporization of water and another thing is that the wasi it has a kind of a the wasi offers of a, to avoid a clogging of the leaves to reduce the clogging of the leaves these are some of the things you should note about them and the next one we're talking about here now is specimen k specimen k which is a tomato fruit tomato fruit is an example of what a berry fruits and it also is a fruit a true fruit the epicarp, mesocarp, and endocarp are what they are, they are thin. So, but the mesocarp and endocarp, they are fused together. They are fused together. Inside there, you have the many seeds. They have many seeds inside it. And um, the other ones we look at here is the palm fruits. The palm fruits is an example of group. It's an example of group. And the epicarp is thin and form the water skin. The next thing there is that the mesocarp is fibrous. The mesocarp is fibrous. But that's different. Like, unlike what you okay, we'll go to that. That is when we talk about mango, we'll discuss it more. We'll go in details. And so we have a the fibrous one, the fibrous mesocarp and the endocarp is very, very hard. These are some of the features of the what the droop. They have a endo epicarp mesocarp and endocarp and endo, their endocarp is always thick but the mesocarp is either fibrous or what fleshy is that okay so we're going to be looking at some other ones now at this point i it might be so the tree that's that is specimen m is an example of c pillar c c pillar, um um fruits which they grow from by capillary, capillary ovary and it is a wind dispersed it, it is dispersed by what wind that means because most of them they have what we call the purpose which help them to um you know help them to be carried by wind and for um tree that it has hair like uh, purpose and then it's what um, dry and the hissing fruits that means um, the fruit is very dry and cannot be, uh, it cannot really crack them. So we'll go down to the other one, uh, the mango fruit. The mango fruit we have example is example of group, and the epicarp is thin, mesocarp is freshy, and endocarp is hard. Now, like what we uh, we discuss about the uh, palm palm fruit, the palm fruit. Uh, mesocarp is fibrous. Why this other one is freshy? So these are some, these are uh, uh, major difference between the uh, mango uh, fruits and that of the palm fruit, which is also a droop. So um, every other things about them remain the same because they have three layers. We have the mesocarp, endocarp, and then uh, endocarp that is hard, and always both of them they have. Um, epicarp that is always thin. Now we go down to flamboyant flower. The flamboyant flower is an example of complete flower, insect pollinated, and then it has superior ovary, which we call hypogeneous, which means it's hypogeneous uh, flower. Now, um, another thing about insect pollinated flowers is that they have color. They are brightly colored. They have uh, they produce nice 
they are what they are calling grains are sticky so um these are some of the things that attract the incense the scent is what attract the the um their poly the, their pollinators to them so you need to pay attention to this and then um look into your uh, this thing read up to get more details on how to handle this situation these are the few ones i think that will be uh, very good for you for coming this far um, i want to thank you so much if you're joining us for the first time uh, please do well to subscribe to our channel and meanwhile um, i think we'll be looking at some maybe two or three drawings of some of these specimen and you know most cases there's always a drawing let's just see how we can uh, make do with few drawings so this is the these are our fine drawing um this is the mango now you look at this i want you to pay, pay attention to this we have uh, the epicarp mesocarp endocarp and then we have the seed inside the endocarp that's where we get the seed now um these two three things together joined together is what we call the pericarp one two three joined together all of them the general name is what uh, pericarp now we we'll go down to this other one the triggers now the triggers will have the hairy purples and then we have the seed this is the seed what am i doing here the seed the seed is this and this help it this is one of the things that help it for uh, to be carried by wind once the wind is blowing they can easily be lifted like a parachute to help them to for disperse that and so uh, this is where we're going to stop for today and then i will want to encourage you to subscribe if you have not done so and then if you have a question you can always leave it there as a comment and then thank you once again for being part of the class bye